yours. But until I got alone in a bedroom with a sincere heart and saw God for who he was, it was amazing what happened in my heart. And I realized I had never really been taught or seen or understood the things that God himself was showing me through his word. And it transformed my life forever. And that was like 13 years ago in June. So uh, I had this real conviction and passion to teach those convictions and, and revelations. And we've just seen lots of fruit. God is faithful. Sometimes we don't understand things. So the best thing to do rather than run our minds is go back to his word and get a grip. <laughs> Serious. Because this thing is like a never-ending nightmare if it's not renewed in God. If it's not thinking through the word, it'll go somewhere. If it's not channeled through Jesus, it'll go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And you'll find it took a hard left turn or something, man. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Bible says don't be conformed to the world, yeah. but be transformed yeah, yeah, yeah. by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. So we know there's a supernatural transforming power in the gospel that makes us uh, brand new, a new creature. Our spirit was dead, but now it lives. So we know spiritually a whole lot takes place in a born-again experience. But the Bible actually teaches that the manifestation of that transformation, if you will, the expression of that transformation comes through my mind being renewed. When I start seeing through truth, when I start seeing through Him, and, and I start living through truth, it says if you continue in the Word, you'll what? No. <laughs> you want to play ball, don't you? <laughs> it says when you continue in the truth, you'll what? You'll know the truth. And what will the truth do? The truth will make you free. Isn't that amazing? Now guess who continues in the truth in John 8 there where it says that in 32. It says, He that continues in the truth, is, or continues in the word, is my disciple indeed. Amen. What did Jesus say to go make in the nations? I'm not being smart. Okay. Visitors, I'm not being smart. He didn't say go make confessing Christians. He said, go make disciples, people that will sell out and surrender to the truth of my word so they become that manifestation of truth. Amen. Isn't that cool? Amen. So that's the journey I'm on and I'm having fun taking it. <laughs> I want to encourage you to run with me. Uh, these folks back here talking got me stirred up. Uh, uh, is it, was it Diana or did Diana, ooh, I was listening. You saw me listening, didn't you? I was like, help me, Spirit of God, help me, because I met 20 people. Okay, but he gave that to me. That was cool. And uh, I, met, I met Justin and Diana, his wife, and we were talking, and she spun around and, and said something very profound. She said, you know, we've grown up just believing a lot of stuff and talking about God and things about the Word that we just never really, it's not really what it says. We've just grown up hearing it, and it becomes our language and our belief system. And a lot of it was derived from the circumstances of life. You pray for Bob, he lives. You pray for Bill, he dies. And then we say, hmm, let me think about this. God heals some and doesn't heal all. There's nowhere you'll find that in the book. Nowhere. That's right. nowhere. But the way that seems right to a man can be our worst enemy if we don't get a grip on our mind through the Word of God. And all of a sudden, hmm, the way that seems right is let me look with my eyes, think with my mind, and come up with a, hey, when did you stroll in? Good <laughs> deal. You're just way back there, girl. Yeah. And, uh, you teach about your leg. That's a great example of thinking with your heart and your mind. Yeah, that is a good example. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can roll into that. <laughs> Serious, I, I, I'll really? see. Because here's the deal. We look with our eyes and think with our mind. And that's why Marilyn's saying that because that was a situation where you could do that. And all of a sudden what you're going through begins to identify you. Your circumstances begin to dictate who you are. This is who you are. This is where you're located. Your identity is determined by Him. Okay, and the identity you have in Him is what determines your circumstance if we hold fast the faith, okay? It's just true. The Bible says that, so we're contending. The other thing is there's no pressure on us. Like some people are quick to get condemned or they say, well, then if I didn't receive answer prayer, I guess I just don't know God or I'm not in faith. And they go on this little tangent of, oh, and that's just, stop that, everybody. If anybody does that, stop that. <laughs> we're not under that kind of pressure. It's a joy to grow. We're in the privilege of growing. See, because that means you're very self-conscious. 
If you're real quick to just say, well, I guess I'm just not in faith then. Well, I guess I just don't understand the gospel. Well, I guess I'm not as much of a Christian as I say I am. And you start saying this <laughs> negative, derogatory stuff. Ah, don't anybody go there, okay? I'm saying that out of a passion of my heart. Because I've been a pastor for a while, and I hear people do that, like, a lot. And then it makes it all about them. Instead of the privilege to believe Him and let it be all about Him and Him loving you. Because as soon as your conversation goes there, guess what you've stopped receiving? Love. Guess what changes your life? Love. Love. (laughs) See, I used to go to church. Now I receive His love and let Him love me. There's a big difference. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) There just is a huge difference. I used to attend church because it's the right thing to do. I was in a church recently preaching the gospel and I could feel unbelief as thick as you could. It was like you get out in the morning in a foggy morning. That's how the church felt. I'm preaching the gospel and it was like (laughs) this cloud of unbelief was sitting in the church. Oh, you could feel it. And I'm just preaching. I didn't even preach heavy stuff. I just preached just... I preached some stuff that I just thought everybody could say, yeah. But they were like, what? I didn't, I didn't even run like a highlight clip. You know what I mean? You're going to run a highlight clip and wreck people. They're like, yeah, right, whatever. I didn't even do that. I was being gracious. I just shared some cool, fresh things that had just happened. And they're sitting there like, whatever. It never happened to me. Well, I didn't see that. Well, I know that. You could just feel all that rise up in the atmosphere. And you know what I said to those people? And I really believe it was by the Spirit of God. I said, guys, isn't this amazing? I said, I can feel in the atmosphere right now unbelief. I can hear people in my own heart. I can hear people saying things like this. And I started to speak. Because you'll hear stuff. Just like I paused for your name. I really did. I, I, I paused and listened for your name. And he spoke your name to me. It was so sweet. Holy Spirit loves me. Yeah. <laughs> He's my friend. <laughs> He's my friend. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, we got a thing going on. And... Uh, So it's cool. If you'll trust Him with everything, who knows? He can... Hey! Who are you bringing with you? Crutches, huh? (laughs) Good to see you, Brandy. Is that an athletic thing? Yeah? Well, grab a seat. We'll jump on that in a little. Hi, Mom. Hi, Candy. Bless you, girl. So, uh... I mean, I, I heard these thoughts. So like I heard her name. I heard thoughts. Do you know how Jesus in the Bible it says he heard the thoughts of their heart? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Amen. As the Father sent him, John 20, he sent us. The things he did, we can do also if we believe. If we believe in him, as the scriptures say, out of our belly flows rivers of living water. This he spake of the spirit. So he wants us filled with him. Okay? These are scriptures I'm quoting. So this is what makes me confident and excited and no I'm not being presumptuous because it's not my idea it's his the things I'm preaching I didn't dream up it's not a wish and want thing it's what he told me is true at what point do I take him at his word right so in this church I heard these phrases of men's hearts and I said right now there's people sitting here a lot of folks thinking this and this and this and I set off like three sentences and it got quiet and people were sitting there because they were thinking those very things and they're like uh oh you know and, and they're thinking maybe he is hearing God and maybe God just heard what I was thinking <laughs> it was just cool are you going to like lead worship? Oh. Huh? Just the Are you leading oh. worship? <laughs> so here's the deal. I said that. Now here's what the Holy Spirit had me say. I said, isn't it? A, and it was real lighthearted like I feel right now. It wasn't harsh. I wasn't like, you guys, you need to get to this altar and believe God. <laughs> you know, I was, I was smiling because it was so convicting because I just stayed like me. Because who knows, I can't turn the hearts of men. But I can perceive things and say things and God can use us. But He's the one that causes increase. He's the one that changes things. But I said this to Him. I said, isn't this amazing, guys? I said, here we all are and we're all together because it's Sunday. Now hear what I said. I know it was God. I said, we're all together because it's Sunday. And this is where we ought to be because it's Sunday. I said, and we don't even believe this book. And they're like... "Mm." And then we prayed for some sick folks and some cool stuff happened. (laughs) Like really cool. Like a deaf ear from birth. 
<laughs> arthritis that couldn't go up the steps, ran up and down, a broken bone in the foot from soccer, sprinting around in the parking lot outside with no pain. God took unbelief and wiped it out through the demonstration of power. Fifteen minutes before, they're sitting there in unbelief. Fifteen minutes later, they're praying for their own sick and God was healing the people they were praying for. Oh. It wasn't like a year-long discipleship class, okay? It's just coming in touch with the truth that's in your spirit. And, and yielding and yes. We're qualified, we're equipped. It's His choice. Amen? Amen. So we're growing. Don't ever forget this, guys. If you're getting frustrated, discouraged in your Christian life, you're being deceived. I promise you, if, if your thought pattern is tearing you down or negative or it's not building you up, it's the wrong voice. Because here's the deal. We grow. Christians grow. Okay? Where I'm, not, where I'm at right now spiritually, I wasn't a year ago. But I'm growing. Yeah. Guess where I'm going to be a year from now? I'm going to be worse than I am now. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing, by the way. <laughs> that term is a good term. <laughs> is it going to be worse? Yep. You say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's his fault. But, but see, in a year from now, there'll be even more understanding, mm-hmm. more revelation, more testimonies, more increase. Because mm-hmm. we grow. The Bible says we grow up into him in all things. Mm-hmm. Right? But we've got to hold fast to faith. We've got to continue in the faith. We can't let circumstances stumble us. We can't let things that don't seem to have been answered stumble us. We've got to stay in the Word, stay faithful, and press through. Okay? It's just it's important. Look, we're, we're going after this thing. We, we lost a boy a couple weeks ago to cancer. A young boy. We, we, we were praying, and we just didn't see the breakthrough. And that can rock you because you're hooked up. You're praying. You're believing. This is a young boy. and it doesn't matter if it's a young or, or an older person. It's It's... it's we know what it is and we know what God said so we're going after it right so it was one of them paradox troubling things in your heart if you're not careful where you ask all the wrong questions and all the answers are negative they pull you back you can't build on what it seems like God hasn't done Mm -hmm. you have to build on what he's doing and continue to go after what's available and possible Mm -hmm. or we'll create theology and cliches like Diana said that have stumbled us all our lives so Bill dies and Bob lives or Bob dies and Bill lives however we'll switch him off we'll let one live and one and we think with our mind because we look with our eyes and we say God heals some and doesn't heal others because that's the way that seems right to man all of a sudden our circumstances have defined our doctrine instead of his word clear you got that so the, the, the truest reflection of the father that we have is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who would agree? Okay. Look at Hebrews 1 real quick. If you have a Bible. Thank you, Father. Father, we ask you to have your way tonight. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. We desire revelation. We don't want just mere knowledge here. We don't want a history lesson. We don't just want to talk about your word. We want to know you more, Lord. Amen. Father, we present our hearts before you humble and hungry. Ask you, Holy Spirit, just to move us and and, and motivate us tonight in the realm of the gospel, the kingdom. Lord God, cause our hearts to see. Cause our hearts to know what you're saying and what you've accomplished through your word. I yield myself and my own heart to you. And Lord, we together come to you and say we're hungry. We want a revelation. We don't want religion. We don't want tradition. We don't want a doctrine. We want you, God. We want to know you. We want to see your glory. We want to walk in your love. So, Father, we just ask you right now to come and manifest yourself among us. We just yield to you. You're amazing. You're an awesome and majestic God and I honor you with all of my heart, Lord. With all of my heart, I honor you and I worship you and I magnify you. You are worthy of all men's praise. You are worthy of the honor of men's hearts. You are worthy 
Lord God. And we just honor you, Master, and we worship you. Thank you, Lamb of God, for coming innocent and dying for guilty people. You are very clear to me, God. You love us. You created us with value, and you paid the price necessary to redeem your children and get us back to original value. Now that we're back, and now that we're in your family, and now that we're the children of God, our hearts long to see and know you as you are and manifest that truth through our lives. In no way do we want to sell short what you accomplished. In no way do we want to be deceived. Not one little bit, Lord, do we want to stand before you and find that we didn't capitalize on every ounce of grace. So, Lord, reveal it to our hearts and manifest yourself to us and through us and change the world around us because it's your desire. We submit to you, mighty God, and we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. We love you. Thank you for your presence. I really, really appreciate you. You're amazing. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Hebrews 1. Let God be real in your life, folks. Talk to Him just like you talk to one another. Amen? Good idea. It's a real good idea. Don't get religious when you pray and come up with phrases. Just talk to God. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm looking at Hebrews 1, verse 1 real quick. I want to establish something. Uh, While you're there, I'm I'm, I'm not being facetious and holding you off here. We're going to look at this. Marilyn mentioned something about my leg. I, I, I got an impression in my heart one night that there was an attack on my life. It was actually, I, I, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's a long testimony, but there was an assault and it was a demonic impression and I knew it because I actually, I don't know if any of you ever felt demonic presence before, but it was very demonic. It was in my bedroom and, and it implied to me that I was going to have sickness found in my leg and I would lose my leg. That was the impression. Whether I heard it or it was audible, I honestly don't know because it was very real to me. But I burst out laughing. Okay? I burst out laughing because of the power of the Word of God. Amen. See, you, don't, you never fear. What holds you in bondage is fear. Fear brings bondage. Fear is submitting to and believing that thing that's threatening and coming against your creative value and your personhood. Who knows, I've submitted myself to Him. I'm dead so He can live in me and through me. He's my rock and my defense. What shall I fear? The Lord is my helper. Hebrews 13.5 The Lord is my helper. What shall I fear? What can man or anyone do to me? Amen? It's real. It's real. But you've got to grow in that because the first reaction in, in life is what? Fear. Jesus says, do not worry. And what do Christians do? Worry themselves half to death. (laughs) Serious. And all the while we pray the right stuff and call it faith and it's driven by fear. Whoa. And faith works through and love casts out all fear. So relationship with Him is a big deal. Faith is the normal natural response of your relationship with God. Honestly. If fear is dominating my life, what it's telling me is, I must know you more. Amen. I need to draw closer. Right. And as I draw closer to you, you'll draw closer mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. I've got to know you, Lord. I've got to know the God of my salvation. Mm-hmm. And you slip alone in a room, close the door, and slip to your knees, and nobody in the world's watching. That's when it's real. Mm-hmm. And you say, I've got to know you, Master. Mm-hmm. I've got to know you. Come into me and manifest yourself to me. Mm-hmm. I love you, Jesus. Okay? It's real. (laughs) That's what will take fear away. Perfect love casts out. So when this thing gave me this impression, I burst out laughing. And it was a real laugh. It wasn't a warfare strategy where, ha, 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 ha. You know, and I'm crying inside. It wasn't one of those. You know how we taught each other to do that? You know? (laughs) It's, it's a response in the Holy Spirit. We're led by the Spirit of God. The Word is Spirit and life. So in the Word, I don't only find out who He is, I find out who I am. That's a big deal. Okay? So when you get a demonic assault like this or an attack or a violation or a threat and it's coming against your personhood and your identity and it's telling you you're going to have sickness and lose your leg... You burst out laughing because the word in your heart is settled and you go, wait a minute, he's a liar from the beginning. And out of my mouth said, wow, now I know I'm not going to lose my leg because there's no truth in you. You're a liar. 
Yeah. Whoa. And I was like excited. So you say, whoa, wait, you got demonic presence in your room and it's speaking to you and you're like excited. Yeah. Because I don't have to confront this thing. I don't have to yell at it. I don't have to say, get out of my room. Oh, gross. <laughs> the Bible says, submit to God. <laughs> submit to God. Yep. Resist the devil. And he will. Wait. Does that sound like one or two steps to you? To me, it sounds like one. Submit to God. If I'm submitting to God, guess what I'm doing? So many people address the devil, they fail to submit to God. They actually get all their attention on the devil. They can throw so much warfare strategy stuff and quote so much stuff. Like people are hearing bad thoughts in their mind, so they pace the floor and plead the blood over their mind. What about just speaking out of your heart and mouth who you really are and saying the truth so the lie is crushed? You swallow the lie with truth. You don't just... You don't do a warfare strategy all night long because as soon as you stop, the thought comes back because you haven't replaced it with truth. And then you think, man, I just did this for three hours. The gospel mustn't work for me as if it's an abracadabra or something. Right? right. No, the gospel is an identity of who we've become through the risen Christ. The gospel is walking out an identity that we are sons and daughters of Almighty God. Okay? So my identity is restored and renewed back to original value. So what am I fearing? Jesus is Lord. Amen. You get it? Yeah. Come on, that feels good. <laughs> I can feel that just feeling good. Oh, right? Because it's true. It's so true. So I burst out. I said, now I know I'm not losing my leg. You're a liar. There's no truth in you. You've been a liar from the beginning. And I was like excited in the Lord. And it, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a pretty strange attack. It, it bothered me. The second thing that happened, I left bother me because I didn't like the thought that this thing could manipulate my personhood because I'm in covenant with God. Still don't even understand it other than I know it came to assault my faith, my confession, what I preach and what I live. Sometimes it'll just come right in your face and assault and contest what you say you believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell people don't ever give counsel just for the need of feeling like a counselor or feeling like you have wisdom or feeling like you're important. Because you start telling somebody else what to do, and what they ought to do, and what Jesus said, and you find yourself in that same trial in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Satan's not impressed with words. He's learned that a lot of people know what to say, but it's not backed up with action. Faith is action, folks. Faith without works is dead. You can say the right thing all day without believing it. Christianity is a whole lot greater than just making a confession of what you've heard preached. It's speaking out of the heart of belief, out of your heart, your mouth speaks. If we really saw this thing and we were living from a revelation, would worry and fear have so much dominance? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or would the gospel teach us how not to fear? Yes. Well, would the gospel teach us how not to worry? Mm -hmm. If Jesus said, don't worry, he's certainly not throwing us under works and rules and regulations. He's telling us there's a place to abide in him where worry dissipates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because my eyes are fixed on him. Come on, this is fun. This isn't like walking through life. Okay, Jesus said not to worry. So today I'm not going to worry. And then you worry about worrying. <laughs> Come on, isn't that weird? We could do that and think, and here we are doing all this energy and works to try to not to worry, and we're just worried about worrying. No, we don't even think that stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like sinning. People are all worried about sinning. No, I think righteousness and right judgment with God and right standing with God, I mean, and righteous judgment. And I'm right with God. I'm forgiven. I'm seen as a son. I live that way. I don't even think about sin. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about the devil. If he shows up, you deal with him. If he manifests, I think about God. I think about sonship. When I leave here tonight, I'm thinking about being right with him, not what I'm going to do wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in a, a, a search for humility, we take this false identity and we almost exalt man's weakness and ability to sin above the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And we think to promote our weakness and make ourselves sound so small makes him sound bigger. Mm -hmm. That's deception. Mm -hmm. I don't have to put myself down to lift him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just need to recognize mm -hmm. what I became through the fall of man and repent and turn back to him and he's lifted me up. Mm -hmm. And you better believe I'm a child of God. <laughs> I've got a new nature. I've got a new heart. The Word's given me a brand new mind. <laughs> and nobody can talk me out of it. <laughs> I'm not brainwashed. My brain has been washed. You get it? 
That's sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, I like that too. <laughs> That's good. Man. Okay, so I woke up in the morning. Well, I looked down. I was reading a John G. Lake book when this happened, so I looked at my book. I just ignored the spirit. I was like, get out of here, you know. And I just started to look at my John G. Lake book. I couldn't read one word on the page. Mm. I couldn't see a thing. The whole page was one big blur. My eyes are absolutely incredible. I'm telling you, my eyes are as good as eyes can be. I, I, and I thank him for them all the time. Mm-hmm. I can like read and see forever and I can just see my eyes are amazing and uh, I'm so thankful for that I found the seeing eyes of the Lord in Proverbs and I just thank you for it <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't read I couldn't see and as soon as that happened I was like what this same voice said ah maybe I'll blind you instead oh. that's exactly what it said you're not prepared for something like that. That thing could eat your lunch in a heartbeat because now your eyes are blurred. You follow me? And I was like, I was I didn't handle that one real well. I kind of yelled at the thing and told it to get out of my bedroom. I kind of I was I was I was I was bothered that it touched me that way and that it could and I I, I didn't respond like I normally do. Not that I made a mistake or anything. I just I was like, Grr. and I hit my tongue slap, and I laid on the bed. I was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and I and I went to bed in God though. But I woke up in the morning, my legs totally dead, had no feeling except a pain shooting through the middle of it, but it had no feeling to the skin, and I couldn't use it at all. That's where the rubber meets the road, because right there, your mind is subject to identity crisis or faith. You either you either let this circumstance tell you who you are and then you go to God from the perspective of the problem or you look at the problem and you stand on what you stood on in the first place. I'm telling you, this thing is real. Because a lot of folks, they wake up and they go, oh my God, God, I don't know how this happened. I said it couldn't do it and it did it. Where is your power? What did I do wrong? God, where are you? you got to protect me. God, you got to... All of a sudden, we are beef nows with God instead of taking a stand in what we know is true. So what did I do? I spun out of bed and I got myself up and I lifted my hands real high and from my heart, I worship God like any other morning. Same morning as any other morning. <laughs> it's just good. And there was a whole lot of stuff that went on and I'm not going into the rest of the story, but here's the deal. Many opportunities to get your eyes on what's happening and think with your mind. If you look with your eyes and think with your mind, I promise you, you're going to make a mistake. You look through the Word. You look by the Spirit. Okay? And you realize you're in warfare. Now, I had an advantage. Actually, I had a real advantage in the sense that, now I have a certain perspective, but, but most people accept sickness as sickness. And this was a demonic manifestation, so I knew it was a direct assignment in demonic spirit. In that sense, I, I, I don't need pharmaceuticals. I don't need 911. In my heart, I'm not against doctors. Nobody's ever heard me preach against doctors. But in that case, just leave me alone. If I know it was a spirit that threatened me, I don't need anything but Jesus and he's enough. That's just where I'm at. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you that's me talking. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm in a place to do that, so just leave me alone. See what I mean? Because I know what it is and I know what defeats it. So just get out of my way. We're wielding the sword, baby. I don't want you to get hacked in the midst of it. So don't, see, and if I want to believe that, who knows that's okay. Don't, don't, don't try to talk people out of faith, but don't try to talk people into faith in those situations. They need a revelation. You don't tell people what to do. I had all kinds of people telling me what to do. They didn't have the experience I had, and they might not have had the revelation I had. So I had people tell me I was in pride and I was ashamed to go to the doctor. And I had spiritual pride. I was like, it made me cry. It grieved my heart, not hurt. It grieved my heart that we could believe that about each other and be clueless to what's going on inside of each other. Nobody knows the mind of a man or the heart of a man, but the spirit of a man. And I'm thinking, you guys don't even have a clue what I'm motivated by. This is all about the gospel. This is all about demonic warfare and the gospel's my victory. This is like, 
whoa. And I had people close to my life telling me who I was and what I was and, and what I needed to do. And it was all because they cared for me. They loved me. But they were very presumptuous. So instead of encouraging and building and getting behind my faith and understanding, looking into my eyes and seeing where I was coming from, they were just giving me their wisdom. Be careful about that. On the flip side, don't you tell somebody what you're ready to do because they're going to try to do what you're ready to do if they're not ready to do it. That's not a good one either. I've done some stuff. I don't even preach from the pulpit. I don't have a grace to because people will try to do it because I did it and have a testimony. And then you get halfway in the middle and find yourself in trouble and say, well, it worked for Dan. And you find it's, you're just trying out a method, 30-day money-back guarantee or something. Mm. But there's no money back. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know, right God. Well, I tried you for 60 days. You weren't what you seemed like you were going to be. So. <laughs> I'd like a rebate. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, Jesus' name is an equivalent to abracadabra. We're not trying to find a rabbit in a hat. Mm -mm. We're walking out by faith the faithfulness of His name and the accomplished, finished work of Jesus and we're growing in that place, guys. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in that place, you're not condemned. And if you're not seeing the breakthrough in areas of your life, you're not condemned. Continue to grow and refuse to be discouraged. Because when you feel condemned, that's always the devil, I promise you. When you feel like giving up, you're making it all about you instead of your quest for Him. Mm-hmm. Come on. I'm talking some straight yeah. stuff here. Mm-hmm. I can feel it going, doink. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Simple stuff. But, but I love what Diana said in the beginning because there's rhetorical things. There's cliche things we've embraced our whole life that need confronted and challenged. And God would be pleased to do that. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So that was, that was the testimony, and it was a very brief version, but there was the go-through example. So I'm actually preaching what I'm preaching from the experience of going through it. And there's a lot of testimonies. There's several opportunities of, of that kind of thing that we're talking about in my life. That's good. So then all of a sudden, Daniel in the lion's den is not a theory to you. All of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar in the fiery furnace isn't a theory. Whoa. It's real. It's not a theory that we can read and preach. Even though the Word's still true and we honor the Word, a lot of us are just grasping theories of the Bible and principles of the Bible. I want revelation of the Bible. Amen. I would not change a thing that I've been through in the last 13 years. It has helped mold me and shape me into who He is in me. Mm-hmm. I just rejoice all the way through. See, if you pick your life back up and you start doing that stuff, you're in trouble. No, mm-hmm. we're just going to walk through fire seven times hotter oh well he's still Lord if he wasn't Lord the first fire is going to kill you anyway what's the seven times hotter what's the big deal first fire will get you seven times hotter is no big deal come on but, but see Satan knows how our minds work intellectual human reasoning common knowledge human intellect mere psychology without the gospel you get it how do we get that way when man fell, God didn't create us that way. I've heard many Christians say, well, God gave us, you know, my intellect, my human reasoning. Nope. He gave us His Word. Yes. In the beginning, He created man. He made man and gave him His Word. And all man knew was God's presence and God's voice. Nothing else totally innocent. When he heard another voice and submitted to it, he became subservient to that other voice. And my sheep hear and obey my voice and the strangers they won't follow. We will always hear it. You have to hear it to follow it. But we won't follow it. So just like Eve heard it, we'll hear it. We live by the Word. So technically, spiritually, you're back in the garden before the tree. Watch this. Through Christ, right now, positionally, you're back to the garden before sin. God sees you as if you've never eaten the tree ever. How much sin does the blood of Jesus cover? So sin's not the issue. Righteousness is and redemption, restoration back to the Father's the issue. Yay! He loves me, right? So I wake up this morning free from sin in the presence of God. God sees me, judges me, and loves me, and touches me, and blesses me as if I've never missed the mark ever. Oh my gosh. Wonder if we do believe that. I do, I promise I do. <laughs> so I'm back in the garden before sin as if I've never eaten the tree. The tree's still there, 
So is the tree of life. Mm-hmm. Well, you say we eat of that. Tree of life. Yeah. You know who that is, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's there. I could pick of it every day. And the voice is there luring me to it. What do you say? Tree of life. Yeah. Word of God. Follow King Jesus. Amen? Amen? So this human reasoning and this intellect, it came when they submitted to the voice. Here's the deal. We don't have to bow to it anymore. We're not in bondage to it anymore. We're set free through Jesus. So be transformed by seeing different than you've ever seen before. He paid a price to get us out of Adam and back into him. What do you say we live from that place instead of the flesh? Good deal? Okay. Hebrews 1. Y'all okay? I just kind of came right out of the chute and just started pouring out my heart. I'm like, oh my gosh, we didn't even say much. I just started preaching. Are y'all okay? <laughs> okay. I didn't know if I missed anything or anybody had anything to share. But, uh, my gosh. I did get this cool phone call today. Listen carefully, John Mulligan. I got this cool phone call on my machine. Hello, this is Bonnie so-and-so. Uh... I just listened to one of your CDs and I really wanted to call you. You prayed for my daughter this week in Virginia on the boardwalk or in the Virginia Beach area. (laughs) And I just really was hoping you'd have time to give me a call sometime. And I thought, I didn't pray for nobody in Virginia. (laughs) It was that guy. It was a good vacation for the (laughs) donkey. John was on vacation, prayed for about 100 people. On his vacation. I think that's a good way to be on a vacation. So I get a phone call at my house (laughs) thinking I'm the hitman. (laughs) They're thinking I'm the mask wonder. (laughs) You're going to like what they said. Listen carefully, John Mulligan. Were you the one that prayed for my daughter? No, absolutely not. Dear friend of mine. Oh, I didn't know. I just know she gave me these CDs and said, listen and see if this guy's for real. Mm -hmm. And I called my daughter and said, this is the real deal. I just needed to call you. I grew up in church all my life, and sir, what you're preaching is right from God. She said, this man, John, who is he? And I told her, I told her what we do and what we teach. She said, well, now I'm at least glad to know and get a confirmation of the story that this man was real because we tossed the thought around if he was an angel Mm. Mm. remember how I said if we just don't focus on us and we just give him Jesus and we just hit and run they're so touched that you'd be amazed a lot of these angel stories might just be people that are just being the church without a need to be exposed but exposing him here they are debating was this a man or was it an angel? Because he was so crystal clear, so loving, so sincere, and he was there and gone. We wonder if he was even a man. That was their whole wondering. So that was one of the reasons she called me to find out if it was a man or an angel. Isn't that good? That makes you want to cry, John. I feel it in you, just ready to bubble out, man. How many times have we preached that if you do this sincere in love without pointing to you, that they won't even be sure if it's a man or an angel, but they'll be sure it was God? Isn't that what we want to accomplish, folks? They don't need to know our name and be able to spell it. (laughs) Oh, that's John Mulligan with two two L's and a K. No, it's Jesus in me. It's Christ, the hope of glory. You've been touched by God, right? (laughs) So I see John getting in a phone booth, you know, his little gospel cape on and his CDs. (laughs) Excuse me, ma'am. Ah, take these. (laughs) What just happened? Was that a man? An angel? I don't know, but it was God, right? That was my phone call today. Now, how powerful is that? That's powerful. That's why I told you to listen carefully, Dr. John. Amen? It's encouraging testimony, isn't it? All you were doing was being the church, buddy. 
And it shows the impact it will have on people when love's sincere. Mm -hmm. It says, let your love be sincere and without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. That's what will change the community. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not our scheduled outreaches, church, Mm -hmm. even though they're okay and don't stop them. It's you manifesting love in a real world with real people. That's what will change your community. John's a perfect example. Good testimony. That was real good. Okay, Hebrews 1, real quick. We're finally there. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. He has in these last days, listen carefully, this is powerful. He has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. Amen. So He has spoken through His Son. And we understand God speaks, speaks through His Word, and we can hear His voice by the Spirit of God. But what it means is literally He has made a statement through His Son. He has spoken, brought a new testament, a new covenant through His Son. He has spoken through His Son, who is the Word of God. Right? It's powerful. Right. Uh, yeah. Let me just read on. Whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. The Mount of Transfiguration. Who's aware that Jesus went up and kind of like turned inside out? Mm-hmm. And the glory within shone round about. Right? And who appeared on the mountain with him? Mm-hmm. Elijah and Moses. The law and the prophets. Right? So the law and the prophets were here, right? And they had their time and season. And he spoke to our fathers in the past through the prophets, right? And some of them foretold and proclaimed things. And and very powerful. It's all God. And we had the law that was given by Moses as a tutor to expose man's desperate need for a Savior is really what the law was. To show us that we can never live the standard of God and we need the grace of God, right? So the law pointed us to Him. The law showed me my need for Him. Okay? It's really cool. So the law and the prophets are on the mountain. Jesus turns inside out. He's shining white and glistening like the sun. And God thunders and says, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. He's got the law, the prophets, and the Lamb. And He says what? This is my Son. Hear Him. Oh my gosh. Because why? In these last days, he has spoken through his son. That's powerful. Jesus said some incredible things. He said to Philip in John 14, How is it, Philip? I've been with you so long, and you say, Show us the Father. How can't you know, Philip, that if you've seen me, you've already seen the Father? He said, Of, the, of, of my own self, I can do nothing. nothing. Right? He said, I didn't come to do my will, but the will of him who sent me Colossians 1 like 15 says he's the visible image of the invisible God he's the tada of God God came out like he is through the son of God he put flesh on his son the incarnate God with flesh right son of God God came out as he is through his son and he said I only say what I Hear the Father. I only do what I see. So he's the total expression of Father. I find the Father through the Son. We preach Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus, of course we have eternal and everlasting life through Jesus, but the focus is always heaven with a Christian. Pray this prayer to go to heaven. No. Pray this prayer to get out of sin and get back to the Father. Pray this prayer to get in relationship with God. Don't pray this prayer so your name's in a book and your life's not changed and you just think your name's in a book and someday I'm going to heaven but everything stays the same. Come on. No. Pray this prayer because Jesus is the way. The way what? Back to the Father. The truth. The truth what? About the Father. The life what? The life of the Father. And nobody comes to the Father except Jesus is the way to the Father. We've made Him the way to heaven and we miss intimacy with the Father. So we're still confessing Christians living in fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, circumstantially driven, and we really don't know God. And some of us get frustrated and backslide and then we wonder if we're still in the book and all that craziness. (laughs) Whoa! That made sense, didn't it? It's because we've misinterpreted it. We've made it all about pray this prayer with me so you go to heaven. No, it's pray this prayer with me so you can get back to the Father and fulfill the reason you're created in the first place and live from your identity of original value. So the purpose of God can be rampant in your life and manifest the King. 
We're God's choice. Come on. Hallelujah. You're his chosen. You're his choice. Handpicked by royalty. Serious. That's how I see my life. I'm the choice of God. Yeah. I'm not an accident. I'm not happenstance. I'm the will of God. Right here is the will of God. You want to know the will of God? Take a good look. Right? <laughs> Serious. That's intimate stuff I'm saying. Wonder if we believe that. Oh my gosh. It would change the fear of man, rejection, insecurity, identity crisis, self-consciousness. It would swallow it all up if we just dare believe we're in him and he's in us. <laughs> you get it? Can you tell I'm happy about this? Oh, yes. I really am. I don't like put on my happy jacket so I can impress you on Thursdays. <laughs> I am impressed <laughs> with God. <laughs> so I have to live this way. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gosh. You ready for verse 3? <laughs> In these last days, he's spoken to us through his son, right? Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, it's right here in our Bible. Jesus is the brightness of whose glory? The Father's glory. The expressed image of his person. Jesus is the expressed image of God. Oh my goodness, it's right there. And upholding all things by the word of his power. The gospel's not in word only, but in power. Let's not separate the two. Let's not become intellectual Christians and just indoctrinated Christians. Let's become Christians with a revelation that manifests the fruit of what we believe. Because I tell people, you honestly don't know the word till you become the word. You can quote it, but we need to become it. I see a lot of people in fear quoting all the promises. We're called to stand in faith in the midst of the fire and declare from the heart of faith that works through love. From the position of promise, we speak to the mountain. We declare the glory of the Lord. Amen? Because it's about Him. It's not about us. I live from the perspective of God in me, not me to God. Does that make sense? It's a whole other realm, folks. Ninety-some percent of Christians pray because of what's wrong from the perspective of fear. One of the most common prayers in the church is I'm going to the doctor, pray that I get a good report. Why? Because you're saying if I don't, it's going to have my identity affected. It's going to move me. When you have the good report. We've got to get to the place where no matter what a man says or what our bodies are saying or what diagnosis, he does not change. He is Lord Almighty God. (laughs) You get it? I'm serious. That, that's a number one request. Pray that I get a good report. Well, of course, we, we, don't, we don't ever want to be told we have cancer. We don't ever want to be told we have Lyme disease. We don't, of course, we're, we're not asking for that. <laughs> but wonder if somebody says that. Wonder if your body starts whispering that. Come on. Like for a two-week period, I got, I got this violent headache years ago for a two-week period in my... It, y- y- there's no way to describe it. It, it, it would wreck me. I mean, no way. Where I would moan and, and just, I didn't even know what to do. And it would just rock me. And it, So here I am. Revelation of righteousness. Feel the presence of God. Hear His voice. Know His love. Know I'm forgiven. And yet this crazy thing's hitting me once a day. After the first week, your mind wants to whisper. Now, I know that from talking to a lot of folks, but honestly, <laughs> man, please hear my heart. I know there's visitors. I'm not being arrogant. I, I, the, the gospels got me way past there. <laughs> I don't even hear those whispers anymore, but I understand how they work because I lived that way for 33 years. But I wasn't like falling prey to that and fighting against that. But after a week, the mind wants to go, you know it's because you got a serious problem. You know there's something wrong in your head. You know there's a growth. You know there's a tumor. You know there could be cancer. You know mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this thing would hit me once a day, and it would just hit me out of the blue, but I could feel it coming on. It was the most amazing pain. And what it wanted to start doing was to get me intimidated and fearing when it would come. And I had things to do. And I had to do a healing service one night, and I was ready to do the healing service, and this thing hit me downstairs. I called Phil and Ruth. I got on the phone with Ruth and I said, Honey, I, I said, I don't know what's going on. I haven't told anybody about this, but I need you guys to just 
pray for me right now? And she said, Dan, this is straight from hell. This is an attack. I said, that's why I just want you to ask you that. Because I've got to go upstairs and preach. And I can't even walk right now. I can barely talk. She said, Dan, you sound terrible. I said, you have no idea what I'm feeling in my body. But I said, maybe you can make your way over here and, and just stand with me or... Or even if need be, if you have to preach or something, would you? And she said, we'd be willing. When they walked in, I was upstairs preaching with fire. Mm -hmm. We hung up the phone, and they were praying, and Mm -hmm. I was just loving Jesus. And that thing just came off of me, and I I went up and preached all the more passionate. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? But I went home, and in the middle of the night, that thing rocked me. And I'm staggering through the house. And my wife said, honey, not that she was wrong. She said, honey, what are we going to do? She said, I hate seeing you like this. She said, this is terrible. What, what are we going to do? And I laughed. And I said, what are we going to do? What is there to do but declare his Lord? I said, don't you understand? This thing's trying to get in our minds. This thing's trying to get in our heads. Literally. Trying to get in our heads and get us to believe something apart from what I know. And the bottom line is I'm in the Christ. I'm on the rock. I started preaching and that thing literally went... <laughs> And it never, ever, ever, ever came back Amen. from that moment. Hallelujah. But it was like it escalated to that point of trial and testing where I had maybe an opportunity to cross over a line or something. You see what I mean? And embrace some natural knowledge. And I refused to do that. You see, well, damn, where do I draw a line? Where, where your faith is. I'm not telling you to do what I did. I'm telling you grow up into Him in all things. It's your privilege. Mm-hmm. Growing in a personal revelation of the Christ in you is a big deal for all of us. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to grab a friend and have us pray for each other, okay? But who knows, you'll never rise above your personal revelation of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's not to put pressure on anybody. That's to put privilege out in front of you. Mm-hmm. Here's the deal. Matthew 16. Who do men say that I am? Men are saying a lot of things. But who do you, you say that I am? Do you hear the question? Okay, men are saying a lot of things, but what do you say? Because you won't rise above what you say. You won't experience beyond what you say. What you say is where you'll be founded. Your revelation is imperative. You can't ride mine and I can't ride yours. We can encourage one another and edify one another, but i got to live out of my revelation of him. Vice versa. Make sense? Okay. So he's the expressed image. He's the... He's the visible image of the invisible God. Okay? So get this. He's our model. He's our example to follow. So Jesus modeled a life that was walked out by the leading of the Holy Spirit of a man filled with the Holy Spirit in right relationship with God without a sin barrier. We don't see Jesus that way. I was never taught Jesus was that way. When when we would say things in church, people would say, well, now that's Jesus. Well, now that's Jesus. It's not us. That's Jesus, right? This same Jesus said, the things I do, you'll do if you just believe. He said, the same Spirit that's in me is going to be in you. I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm sending another. He's just like me. He'll do in my absence what I would do if I was here. So receive Him. He's given His precious promises. They're yes and amen. So we have a yes and an amen to grow into. Trouble is, when we don't see the manifestation of the yes, it drives us bonkers and our minds has to come up with a reason. Usually at the cost of His Word. (coughs) I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to raise my circumstance above His Word if He raised His Word above His name. Ooh. Psalms 138.2 He's magnified His Word above His... If He raised His... Why did He do that? Because it's only through His Word that I can see the honor of who He is. I can only truly worship His name through the revelation of His Word. Mm-hmm. You get it? Mm-hmm. So without His Word, I can't know Him. Mm-hmm. So His Word's above His name because His Word takes me to the honor of His name. Mm-hmm. We let our circumstances rise above His Word. Mm-hmm. And His Word's above His name. Mm-hmm. So we let our circumstances rise above the Word and call on His name in despair and wonder where He is. Mm-hmm. something we're growing in. We need to persevere. Persevere. Wow. When she said persevere, Hebrews 10 just flashed in me like 35. Don't throw away your confidence. It has great reward. For you have need of endurance so that after you fulfill the will of God, you can receive the promise. 
So he's telling us to fulfill the call of God we need to endure. So that means there's adversity. There's trials. There's troubles. There's things. There's an enemy on the earth. There's a thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? But I've come to give you... Come on, is that job description or what? Jesus said in John 10, there's a thief... And it's actually, we always know it's the devil because all false teaching comes from the devil. But the beginning of that chapter is actually focusing on false teaching. Mm -hmm. And he calls false teaching a thief that steals, kills, and destroys. See, I'm convinced in my own heart that the number one problem in the body of Christ, if there is one, isn't the lack of faith. It's the lack of understanding. We're not sure what to believe. If we gain the understanding, we can stop destruction. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, not because of the choice of God. Remember our little conversation, honey? When, I, when you said about God's choice and sometimes God's plan. And Watch this. My people are destroyed for the lack of... He doesn't say the choice of God. So how do we stop destruction? Let's get the knowledge and stop destruction. Power of life and death is in the... Watch how these two couple... We have a lack of knowledge, so we speak death. We have a lack of knowledge, so we speak ignorance. We have a lack of knowledge, so we speak fear. And the two come together. And all of a sudden, what you believe in the lack of knowledge comes out of your mouth and confirms it with the words. The power of life and death is in your and my tongue. Watch, if God was in administratively sovereign control over the earth, why would He put the power of life and death in your tongue? He'd let you speak whatever you want to speak and just override it with His sovereignty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He made the earth subject to men. The earth He did give, Psalms 115, to the children of men. In the power of His name, He told us to subdue and steward the earth. <coughs> Through the fall of man, we've become subdued. And Jesus Christ got us back on track. So now we've got to push away fear and stop being afraid to be called presumptuous for preaching what I'm preaching. <clears throat> Honestly, stop calling God this big sovereign God and overrating His sovereignty. He doesn't want you to make Him sovereign in the way that He's got the day administratively controlled. Right. If people are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge, it's not because of the administrative choice of God. If the thief's stealing, killing, and destroying, it's not because God assigned him. If the power of life and death is in the tongue and people are speaking death, God might be willing life. Here's a good example in Timothy. It's God's will or desire that all men be saved. That word is sozo in the Greek. It literally means healed, delivered, protected, and preserved, made well or whole, and kept safe and sound. That's the inclusive, whole inclusive word of what it means, sozo. So God's desire is that all men be sozoed, saved, and filled with the knowledge of Truth. Why? Because once you're saved, truth will keep you saved. It's God's desire. All men are saved and filled with truth. Are all men saved? Do all men get saved? And is everybody filled with truth? And do all men get filled with truth? But yet it's God's will. So not everything that happens is the will of God. Oh my gosh. We teach from little up. I heard whatever happens is God's will. God's in control, you know. Somebody breaks their leg. Well, God's in control, you know. Somebody gets diagnosed with cancer. Well, you never know what God might be doing. He works in mysterious ways. He's in control. You know, we'll just have to trust Him. It sounds religious. It sounds honoring. It sounds spiritual. It's absolutely whacked and deceived. It has no revelation of the Word in it. I'll just be it straight. <laughs> How's that for frankness? Hey, I'm a real guy. This lady called me today that was referring to me as the person that prayed for the daughter, the John, and the whole thing we were laughing about. And she said... She said, I am so amazed you called me back. You must be so busy. I can't believe I'm talking with you on the phone. I said, oh. I said, I mean, come on. I said, what are you talking about? I'm a real guy. I mow my grass for heaven's sake. I, I dress today, you know. She was like talking like I'm. Th I said, in fact, if you know what I'm doing right now, you'd probably laugh. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm jarring peaches. I got the canner cooking and I'm watching the time and I'm about ready to turn them off. They're jarring. I just put seven jars in the canner. Oh my gosh, that is like so human, she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. I was like, honey, I'm a real guy, but I'm in the Christ. I, a can of peaches, why is that wrong? You know, it's like, a, but, but people think, I don't know what they think. I don't know what they think you do through the day. You know, I brushed my teeth this morning. I actually went to the bathroom. Come on. 
Jesus was the same way. Don't think he didn't sweat and go to the bathroom and sleep and get tired and feel hungry. He was a man. He became a man. But he was empowered and anointed by the Spirit of God. And you know he came as a man or God wouldn't have had to anoint him. Acts 10.38 the Spirit wouldn't have had to come upon Him. He'd already been upon Him, the Spirit of the Lord, if He came as the Lord. No, He came as a man. He was tempted at all points, yet without sin, God can't be tempted by any man. So, He had to be a man to be tempted. He couldn't have came as God or He'd have never been able to be tempted. He wouldn't have been a viable sacrifice and a perfect replacement and sacrifice if He'd have never been tempted and been able to bear witness of our weaknesses. He went through what we go through, yet without sin. So he was the perfect lamb. Amen. So a man took place for man, took the place of man, so man could be reinstated and restored back to that place of original value. Amen. Yeah. To steward the earth and say to the mountain, move. Amen. we got to get that. Because if we get that, say goodbye to guilt, condemnation, shame, weakness, insecurity, identity crisis, oh me, oh my, wrong side of the bed, he said, she said, throw it all out. That's all useless. That all came through the fall. It's not normal. Anger, frustration, wrath, malice, jealousy, bitterness, envy, pride. It's not your created value. It's not who we are. We are created in his image. Watch this. This isn't even blasphemous. We are created in Him to be like Him. We're the family of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus called God His Father. They wanted to stone Him. Because to call God your Father is to make yourself equal with God. That doesn't mean you're God. That means you're on the plane of God by His choice. You have His genetics in you. It's His grace that rules your life. The kingdom of God is where, Barb? In you. Fear not. Little flock, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Get it? Why do we sell this stuff short and be like, well, you know, we're just wicked old sinners and we're always going to mess up and thank God one day we'll go to heaven and be made perfect. (laughs) Ah! Come on, who's heard that all their life? Well, you know, it's wonder even considers this because he considers this because he knows who we are and who we're created to be. He knows that that fallen state was a lie and it wasn't who we are. See? So when I'm... Yeah, that's right. So so when we're walking that way, he goes, well, that's not even Dan. That's not even who he is. He doesn't even know, but I know who he is. I know I created him to be. And I paid the price and I'm drawing him unto myself. Mm. And one day I'm going to open his eyes and open his heart. And reinstate him back into the planet, back into the kingdom, so he can once again be filled with the spirit and glory of God and manifest the reason I created him. <laughs> Restored the purpose. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So Jesus, we follow him. Jesus said, "What? Follow me." Remember, I, I didn't finish this thought. This is good. The spirit of God just popped this up. This is powerful. He called God his Father. They wanted to stone him in John 5 because to call God his Father was to make himself equal with God. And they were like, blasphemy, stone him. But when his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, he said, when you pray, pray saying, our Father. What was he saying? Guys, he's not only my Father, he's your Father too. Amen. You were created on the same plane as God, but Adam ate this tree, followed his wife instead of God, and you all fell and went into a... But he came to get us back. It's simple. So the key is seeing ourselves apart from the fall, seeing ourselves through the Christ. That's why I said I used to go to church. Now I let him love me. <laughs> That's huge. I used to say I was a Christian. Now I'm loved by God. If your nature's not being changed and your life's not being changed from what it was before. You said you were a Christian. It's because we need the love of God in our lives. It's simple. His love will change us. His love will swallow up my nature. So what do you do? Focus on your weakness and what needs to change about your life? Thank Him that His love is greater and it abounds more and more to you. And you just receive it and thank Him and start declaring how special you are in the sight of God and how worthy you are of the blood of Jesus because He said so. And you start receiving love and your whole identity will change and strongholds will break and habits will change and your life will be transformed. Why? Because righteous consciousness produces its fruit unto holiness. 
if I present my members unto sin or unto disobedience like sin, like I call myself something I'm not for Christ and I just judge myself short, I'll produce short fruit. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll weigh in less. It says, actually, I'll bear my fruit unto unrighteousness. And I'll be conscious and constantly aware of my weakness instead of his strength. My failure instead of his victory. If you're struggling in your life with any repetitive activity, um, I'm just challenging you and calling you into a place to just start thanking God. He loves you amazingly. God, you know everything about me. You know what I've done, where I've been. You know the things that try to choke my life. And yet, Jesus, you hung there and died for me. You loved me when I was unlovable. You saw me before I was seen. You knew me from the beginning. And here I am. And I'm saying, thank you for loving me. Right in the midst of an issue in your life, you're receiving the love of God. You've delivered me from darkness and you've translated me into the kingdom of the Son of your love. And I receive your righteous judgment. I receive the victory of the cross. Through Jesus' resurrection, I'm justified. You see me right now as if I've never sinned. Just as if I've never sinned. Thank you, Spirit of God. You desire to live in me and flow through me. Thank you for having fellowship with me. You make me strong. A lot of Christians don't pray like that. We're not even taught to. We just pray for the car to run better and the boss to act right. (laughs) Things that pertain to our day. Serious, I'm being real. How many of us are in a place of communion and union with Him, increasing our relationship and our love life with the Master? That's what will transform your world and bring you into His. Amen? So we follow who? We follow Jesus. So we have, wow, let's go there real quick. Y'all all right? Am I talking too much? You're doing fine. Y'all good? <laughs> I'm just going on and on. We don't always have, every meeting's different. Sometimes it's class participation and, and sometimes it's like this. I can't, and I won't apologize for it. I'm just making sure y'all are all right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not even looking to be encouraged. I feel incredibly encouraged. But, like, I'm not asking you to say, hey, your preaching's great. I already know it is. It's the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> How's that for security, huh? Thanks, yeah. boss. That's good. Second Corinthians. I know because of the fruit it produces. See, because I live with me. I know me. You might not know me or not with me every day, but I am. Honestly, I'm looking at you right in the eyes now. I know who I am. I know how I live. I know the joy that's in my heart. I know the freedom that I feel every day of my life. <laughs> See, so what are you going to do with that? <laughs> how can you debate with that when you're living this thing? When you wake up in peace? When you go to sleep with a clear conscience? When your heart's one with Him? It's the greatest thing I've ever known. How are you going to take that from me if I'm living it and experiencing it? Then I can preach it with conviction and passion under the anointing of God. Because we got this thing going on here. It's really good. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Amen. This is amazing. Do you know how in the church, who's ever heard us say this pertaining to healing? Well, you know, praise God if He does, but He doesn't always choose to heal. I mean, let's pray because maybe God will, but if He doesn't, we just have to learn to live with it and receive the grace. Who's heard that kind of talk in the church? Let me see your hands if you've heard that kind of talk. Class participation. Okay, that's a majority, okay? Wonder where we got that language. Because things have gone that way and it seems right to us because of the way certain things have gone. We've prayed, right? We haven't seen somebody healed, so we come up with these analogies. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something here that's incredible. Well, let me just preach this out quick and then we're going to read this. Let's look at faith for a second. Hebrews 11 says, Faith is the substance of things... Well, it's things, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things... How can you have the evidence of what you haven't seen apart from knowing the will of God in your heart? What gives you the evidence? The Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the... Where's the hope come from? What He has spoken, and He's spoken through His Son. If I can't put my hope and my trust in the Word of God, the immutable Word of God, then 
All I have is need. And I'm praying because I have need. I wonder if I'm decreeing and declaring because I have hope, because I have promise, because I have a faithful God. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing here. So faith is the substance. That word literally means the realization. Or confidence of what I hope in. How can I have a realization or a confidence, an evidence, a realization, a confidence, a hope, a substance, an evidence of what I haven't seen or what I'm just merely hoping in unless I've established and settled in my heart the will of God in the matter? Do you get it? Does this make sense? See, we think because we prayed, it's faith. There's a lot of people praying. No, we're decreeing, we're declaring. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything, actually. I know people would dispute you on that. But I've been in places where I've just known better in my heart and what was ever trying to come or happen had no power because you're just not coming through this. It's just faith. Because you just know. Isn't that cool? Man, it's powerful. Because it's not a you thing, it's a him thing. It's not based on what you do, it's based on what he's done. Like you can't pray the perfect prayer. But you can believe in a perfect work. Make sense? We get self-conscious when we pray for folks. Come on, we think about what we're praying and we got to pray right. we got to quote the right scripture. And the tougher the situation, the more spiritual we've got to sound. <laughs> the dig, deeper we dig. Come on, you know these things are true. It's happened to us. If you've spent any time praying for the sick, you've been tempted in all those things. That's called self-consciousness. We're putting our confidence in what we can produce instead of what He's already accomplished. Amen. Jesus' name, be healed. Or be healed in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Or cancer go. Or infirmity leave. Or pain you get out. Mm-hmm. It all works quite well. <laughs> because He's a finished work. You just go for it. Or we're going to get involved and it's going to become a method. Or it's going to be about us and what He prayed or she prayed. And next thing you know, people will be repeating that. And... Next thing you know, we'll have a textbook on the ten ways how to bring forth healing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we all agree that we've preached this God that maybe He will, maybe He won't. We've heard that in our lives, right? Let's pray, because who knows, maybe God will. We've got to be prepared in case He doesn't. Let's not get our hopes too high, but we ought to at least pray. How weird is that? Did you hear this your whole life? Don't get your... And the Bible says that hope is the anchor to your soul. It takes you through the veil into the presence of God. That faith is the substance of your hope. So the Bible says get your hope what? Sky high. And the world says, and Christians say, don't get your... I went to pray for God today and there was feelings in the room about why are you doing this to create false hope? What is false hope? When you're you're embracing that kind of thinking, who are you protecting? Yourself or the gospel? Yourself. And you're subject to be discouraged and disheartened, I promise you. Here's one. What you see is... You ever hear that one? What you don't know won't... Did you ever hear that one? The Bible says what you don't know is destroying you. Don't you ever live by what you see. You live by the Word of God. You hear how twisted the language is on the planet? Do you hear how 180 it is? Because there's a God of this world called Satan. And the way that seems right to man has crept into our language. We've been tutored by it, guys, from the day we were born. We must be born. Not just a spiritual birth. Transformed. Renewed. Because we're biting the bait and don't even realize it. We're saying things that the enemy's taught us. Well, what you don't know won't hurt you. Here's another one. Two heads are... Who's the head? Who's the body? And why do we think so much? Let's just do what he said. Simple to me. This thing was not created to think about all this stuff. This thing was created to harbor what he said. To file what he said. It's got to have value. He wouldn't tell you to renew it. It was created by God, the mind, but Satan has perverted its use. True? 
Yep. Man, think all the things we Ooh, say. There's actually awesome. a lot more that phrases. Awesome. Totally 180 of the word. Amen. And the church says them. <laughs> Not just the world. No, the church. The church. Mm-hmm. We're destroyed for the lack of mm-hmm. power of life and death. Mm-hmm. You get it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let me try to get through this here. Paul was planning to come here to see the Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Didn't I tell you where to go? No. I, knew. I knew where I was going. Y'all didn't pray enough today. You should have known where I was going. Y'all had the sermon, you'd have been there. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're right with you, brother. We're at Second Corinthians. No. Wouldn't that have been cool? Everybody in the room was on the page. I'd have been like... But I said, I told you, didn't I? Yeah. We knew. <laughs> Who knows God's like that? Who knows he can just do that? Man, there's some cool stuff happening. God's good. I did. I was with a youth conference this past weekend. One of the young men has a gifting in his life, and it was bizarre. And I was like, God, I'll take that. That would be cool. You know, and there's a fear of preaching of angels and things. It wasn't that. Who knows angels are, uh, uh, they're, they're like God's administrative help in a sense. They, they're ministering spirits. They, 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 they help. Right. The flames of fire, they come to aid those who have salvation there. There's an angelic realm. <coughs> We're not worshiping angels, but there is an angelic activity. But this young guy, like when I'm out in a restaurant or I'm out in public, I'll hear a word of knowledge for somebody. So I'll know what's wrong with their body. Mm-hmm. At the times that happens, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know they got a certain ailment. This guy looks and sees an angel with his eyes mm-hmm. and is pointing to the body part. <laughs> he had so many testimonies it was incredible <laughs> wild testimonies here's the one that freaked me out and made me laugh I, it didn't stretch me it didn't stumble me don't let none of this stuff stumble you he looks he's in a restaurant and he looks and he sees an angel standing in the restaurant and he looks the angel's wearing a neck brace and it's pointing to a man and it disappears he's like oh god he walks over and says excuse me sir do you got some neck issues? He said, how can you possibly know that? I've had them for like 9, 11 years from a terrible accident and my vertebrae are all messed up. He said, I'm going to be real honest and tell you how I know. He said, I'm a Christian and there's a gift in my life. There was an angel of God standing here pointing to your neck. And I don't know if he told him he was wearing a neck brace or not. I probably wouldn't have. I probably wouldn't because I'd have lost the guy. Right? Because you tell this stuff in the average church gathering and you lose people. I'm not trying to stumble, folks. Listen, he had so much fruit, so many testimonies, and here's the deal. Is he worshiping angels? No. They're helping him in his calling, and he says to the people, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Who knows? That's all gospel. That's all powerful. So I'm like, Lord, let me send me angels. Let yeah. me see angels. Go ahead and point to the world and show me what's up. Yeah. And I'll just go and say, oh, hey, there was just this cool angel pointing. What's going on in your right ear? He was pointing to your right ear and going like this. He was going, you're losing your hearing? Or can't you hear out of that ear? No, I'm totally deaf in that ear. Yeah, you know why? That angel was just standing there going like this. Now watch. We're going to pray and he's going to open your ear. Boom. Who knows that? Yeah. Would you like that? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. So let's not think it's weird. So here's a 19-year-old living that way. Wow. He's just seeing that stuff. Tell the part at, um, at the um, Penn State, you know, at the cafeteria. He's in the cafeteria. He's sitting there, and he's like, boy, this is a bummed-out atmosphere. This is just like a boring place. There was just no God activity. He's sitting there thinking, because there's no God activity. Everybody's telling their stories and in their own little soap opera. You know what I mean? Not being smart. They're in their own little world, sitting all around at at large. And he's sitting there feeling like it's a boring place because God's not moving and and we need a move of God. And he's sitting there and he looks up and he sees three angels in the cafeteria. And he's like, oh my gosh. He said, said, you think you're ready for it? And I see him, but he said, it always just... I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and he said, everyone was showing him something about a person. So he went to each person and asked them out loud, prayed for him, and they were all instantly healed, turned the whole cafeteria upside down. People started asking for prayer, worshiping God. Oh, Penn State Cafeteria, main campus, upstate. God rocked the place. Three angels pointed to bodies. He goes, three people are healed, and then everybody goes, oh my gosh. Because it's stuff that he couldn't know. 
is supernaturally revealed. Yeah. What's the difference if the Holy Spirit speaks it to your heart in a word of knowledge, or an angel goes, Yoo-hoo! What's the difference? Why do we get stumbled by that stuff? What's the difference? Every one of us, as I'm talking, would be thinking, that would be cool. That would be cool. It would be cool. Who knows it's cool to hear the voice of the Spirit, any word of knowledge, but that's just cool. And at the end, you know, he was like, pray for me, and, and, and he was saying some things to me, and I said, are you kidding me, man? I don't want you to pray for me. Yeah. I was like, because I want to see. But it's just fun. I, I Bless me, 19 years old, Christian all his life, but in 2004, God dropped this gift in him and rocked his word. He had so many testimonies. Oh my gosh, he had so many testimonies. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay. Verse 17. you got to understand that Paul was passing by Macedonia to come see the Corinthians, okay? So what he's saying is, when I was planning to do this, verse 17, did I do it lightly? So was it just a light thought, like, well, maybe I'll go check in with Corinth and them guys. No, what he's saying is he's being led by the Spirit, and when he was speaking, he's speaking on behalf of the king. So if he's saying, I'm coming to see you, he's saying, I'm, I'm not doing this lightly. It's not a maybe I'll stop in and drop by. What he's saying is, I'm aiming to come your way. Okay? Did I do it lightly? Watch this. Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh that with me there should be a yes, yes, and no, no. In other words, well, maybe I'll come, maybe I won't. We'll see. What he's saying is when you live like that, you're living by the flesh. When you have a yes, yes, or a no, no, maybe I will, maybe I won't, how can you put integrity in that? How can you put trust in that? How can you put expectation in a yes and no? Okay? Maybe I will, maybe I won't, right? So what he's saying is to plan yes, yes, and no, no, or to embrace yes, yes, and no, no, is according to the flesh. Did you hear that in verse 17? Okay, now watch this. Now he flips that precept right over to God and says, but as God is what? Faithful. Say that again. God is faithful. faithful. See, when you're faithful, your yes is yes. So God's not yes and no. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Hey, let's pray. Who knows? Maybe God will heal, but maybe he will choose not to heal. He's God. We'll learn to live with whatever He decides. Who sees that God can't live that way and express Himself that way because you couldn't put your faith and trust in His faithfulness? You getting this? Watch. It's right here. This is phenomenal. As God is faithful. Who hears that He takes this precept and throws it right back and defines God? As God is faithful, our word to you what word? Whose word? What word were they preaching? The gospel. The gospel we're preaching, as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. Maybe He will. Maybe He won't. Maybe He wants to save you. Maybe He doesn't. Maybe you'll be healed. Maybe you won't. Let's pray and see. You get it? Our word was not a yes and no. Now look, he goes deeper with this thing. And he nails it. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you. So what word were they preaching? Christ the Lord. The word of Christ that we brought to you was not yes and no. That's what he's saying. Was not yes and no, but in Him was yes. You say, what was yes? All the promises of God. In Him are what? Yes. 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 And in Him are what? Amen. 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 To the glory of who? God. Through who? Us. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who's the move of God flow through? Us. So we're not calling on a God way out there to move somewhere. Right. He moves through us. We're His church. We're His pe- we don't go to church. We are the church. Amen. The move of God is yes and amen to the glory of God through us. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory very simply means any manifest attribute of God. The manifestation of God in your life is the glory of God. The Christ in you is the hope of the manifestation of God. Not praying out here to a God. 
but releasing a God that abides and lives within us. Oh my gosh. Why do you think we lay hands on the sick? Because I bet we represent Him in the kingdom and when we touch, He touches. And the Spirit that's in us flows through us. I wonder. (laughs) Right? This is simple. I wonder if we don't believe that and we have a yes and no gospel and we lay our hands on the sick because the Bible tells us then we've turned the gospel into a religion and ordinance of tradition. I wonder if we anoint with oil because James 5 says but we fail to pray the prayer of faith because the prayer of faith. faith. Not the choice of God. The choice is already revealed through Christ. How many did Jesus heal that He touched? How many were healed that came to Him? Did he ever turn one down? Did he ever say no? Did he ever say I would but I can't because it's not the will of God? Did he ever say I would but it's not quite your time? Did he ever say I would but God's using this to build character in you and teach you things? (laughs) Jesus never said those things? Then why do we say those things? Jesus revealed the Father. We've preached our circumstances. Time to get back to the Father. Amen. Don't we say all those things in the church? No. Well, who knows why God's doing this? He's just trying to build some character. He's working good things in you and He's using this. You know, if you weren't going through this, you'd have never this and this and this. Mm-hmm. Who knows God can work all things together and will work all things together to the good? It doesn't say He causes that. Who knows He's greater than the enemy? Amen. The enemy comes to steal, but He gives life more abundantly. Who knows if you keep your eyes on Him and remain in love with Him and know you're called according to His purpose, He'll work all things together for the good. Mm -hmm. Who knows I'll come out of every trial more mature, more fine-tuned, more like fine gold. Mm -hmm. Sharper and smarter than ever before. Mm -hmm. So who knows the trial's not my issue. Keeping my eyes on truth is my issue. Come on, I'm preaching. It is good. I'm I'm getting blessed. I believe the gospel more than before I came tonight. (laughs) Serious. No, it's good. Watch this. How many promises? All the promises of God in Him, in Christ, in my name. Go in my name, right? Cast out devils in my... Lay hands in my... It's in His name. Why do you look at us as if by our righteousness, Acts 3, we've raised this man up. It's faith in and through His name that this man stands whole before you. Yeah. The power's in Him. It's in Him. Right? But where's that power? In us. It's in Him, in us. Christ, the Anointed One, in us. The Anointing. The body of... The embodiment of the Anointing is us. Oh my gosh. That's God's choice, not ours. If He said so, what do you say? We'd be humble and yield to it and receive it. And stop trying to talk ourselves out of it and calling it humility. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) For all the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him, amen, Amen. to the glory of God through... Us. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Is the gospel a yes and amen gospel? If you breed yes and no together, say you marry them two, they come together and have a child. What did they just produce? Yes and no would produce what? Maybe so or maybe not. Think about that. If you have a yes and no theology, you very simply have a maybe so, maybe not. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Mm -hmm. You can never, ever, ever, ever release faith and be a believer in that place. Does that make sense? Now do you see why the enemy has got us to believe and speak and think like that for generations? So what you said in the beginning, girl, we've been taught this stuff generationally. That's right. And we've just heard it our whole life and it becomes our language and we pass it on. Mm -hmm. Mm. But when you take a good look at the true Word of God, we found we've been deceived and we haven't been saying what He's saying. I bet that's why we haven't been having the fruit that He's promised. Mm -hmm. And the more we get what we're saying, the more we say, well, see, and it affirms what we're saying because we have what we're saying. Mm. 
mm. or don't have. So every time that happens, it just reaffirms our theology. But when you look at the book, something has to change. I think it's us. Amen. <laughs> True? Amen. It's a yes and amen gospel, not a yes and no. I'll close with this one. Matthew 5.17 says, let your yes be yes. and your no. no be no for anything else is of the evil one. Mm. I wonder where this theology came from. Mm. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Mm. It came with a mask of humility. Mm -hmm. Like it's a humble thing to put it in the hands of the Lord Mm. when he's put it in our hands. Mm. I've given you the kingdom. Now preach the gospel of this kingdom for the earth I did give to the children of men. You go in my name. You say to the mountain. You lay your hands in my name because you and I are one. In Luke 10, go heal the... I can't heal the sick, but he tells me to go heal the sick. Why? Because he expects me to know he's in me and we're one. And when I go, he goes. And when I touch, he touches. And what he's trying to say is we've been made one. You're not going alone. It's I and you and you and me. Together we're one. Now go heal the sick. Okay. (laughs) Come on. I'm not being arrogant when I say this. I went to church my whole life and nobody's taught me these things. My whole life. I'm not saying that in a weird way or wrong way. I'm not trying to put hurt in your heart and get you to think about preachers and churches and where you're going. I'm telling you, I went to church because it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I had wrong thinking and wrong believing my whole life and I gave up on God and I walked some other way. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the gospel. Thank Thank God for the truth. Mm -hmm. Because in 13 years of preaching this thing, Mm -hmm. I've seen a few things change and People change. Circumstances change. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see more. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's a yes and amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Yes and amen. amen. So think of these promises. If every promise is yes and amen, all things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, what's the key word there? Not what you ask in prayer. Believing it shall be Done. 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 Right? That's right? Ask anything in my name mm-hmm. of the Father and he will yeah. say to the mountain, move and it will move and nothing will be impossible mm-hmm. for you mm-hmm. if you believe. Mm-hmm. You hear that promise? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Nothing, nothing shall be impossible for who? Mm-hmm. Watch this one. Now to him, Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think or imagine by the power that works in us. Who's he moving through? Are we waiting on God or is he waiting for us to release faith and dare believe his word? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. (laughs) You say, well, where's God say no? He'll never reject you. He'll never resist you. He'll never avoid you. He'll never not receive your repentance. There's things that God said no to, but there's things He said yes to. He said no to condemnation. There's therefore now no. No condemnation. God will never condemn you. His no is a no. So condemnation is never, ever, 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 ever God. So when Christians feel condemned, it's never God. It's a trap. And all we need to know is know His love and His heart more and it will free us from condemnation. Even if you know you deserve something, even if you've done wrong and you flat out know it, who knows? He still said, I didn't come to condemn you. So who knows? The more I run to him and I say, Daddy, oh my gosh, I've been here. I've done this. I even knew in my heart, and God, I've fallen your mercy in my head. And you're sincere about that. Who knows? There's something he'll work in you and break off of you. But the key is receiving his mercy, receiving his love, and letting love have a perfect work in you. You get it? So sweet. So I'm just real encouraged to go after God. I don't want to sell him short. I, uh, Tom and I had a conversation. I just looked at Tom and this, this thought came in me. We had a conversation a while back. He had asked me a question about something. I don't even remember the question, honestly. Not That's, that's no disregard to Tom's question. I just don't remember it. At the, but I do remember this response. I said, Tom, 
I, all I can tell you is I don't want to embrace anything that would hinder my ability to believe, period. In other words, it's always possible and it can flow through my spirit. It, I, I don't even want to think about the person I'm praying for unless the Holy Spirit cues me up to something. I, I don't want to let anything circumstantially, any question we haven't been able to answer, I don't want to try to answer it if it's going to hinder my ability to release the kingdom in any situation. I do not want to embrace any belief that hinders my ability to see the will of God as a yes. Do you understand? I honestly believe that's my place and your place as a Christian. Even in Hebrews 2, and I'm trying to close, even in Hebrews 2, in Hebrews 2 it says about what is man that he is mindful of us. He's created us, right? He's crowning creation and glory on the earth. Wow. He visits us and all that good stuff. Psalms 8. But he says this, he said, He put all things in subjection under our feet. And in saying all things in subjection, there is nothing that is not placed under us or that He did not put under our feet. However, we don't yet see all things under our feet. That's because we're growing. That's right. But watch. But we see Jesus. See, when we don't see all things under our feet, we get our eyes off Jesus and we embrace the way that seems right to man. When I don't see all things under my feet, I've got to look right to Him because He's the author and finisher of my... So when I take my eyes off of Jesus, I'll be deceived. If I look at Jesus, I see the Father. And I hold on to what I know is mine. Even if I've lost someone and I know there's a way for them to live, I won't go into the next situation with bruises and turntailed and intimidated and driven by the failure of it all. You know how we can be. I need to go into everyone fresh from the perspective of the risen Christ. Because he's Lord. You get it? Any questions? Any concerns? Any thoughts? John. Are you real? John. Are you an angel? You look like one, buddy. I got to share something that has to do with a 10 year old girl. Um, there's just so much I could share, but we're running late. So um, I just got to share this. And I got to thank you for your prophecy early in the year. I don't remember any No, it was all God. He said I'd be praying for, for numerous people in my office. Well, over the years, that's increased, but now it's probably about 80 to 90% of the patients that walk in my door get prayed for. And that was a word from you. Actually, from the Holy Spirit through you, my beloved wow. sister. Um, I, I met with a, a grandma uh, right before I went on vacation, actually the day before, so Thursday, two weeks ago. And her name's Elizabeth, and she was having extreme like, chronic pain in her legs. She was having numbness in her feet, and she had some major lung issues. And she just was just sick and tired of being sick and tired, quite frankly. And I did naturopathy, and I, I helped her out. But the most importantly, I prayed for her. And her numbness left, her pain left, and she just walked out kind of blown away. But not as blown away as her daughter was. Her daughter was really touched. Her daughter works in the medical system and really didn't have a whole lot of faith or confidence in naturopathy and wasn't maybe as active as she used to be in the church and so on. And, and Mama's just a wonder, wonderful lady. Anyway, um, today they came back for a follow-up. And I had received an awesome email and how the, the woman was able to sing in the choir for the first time. Like back, not, you know, she used to be in the choir. She had quit the choir. First time she could actually sing, she sang all six hymns at her church mm-hmm. without being out of breath. Oh. How her spirits are so lifted and how mm-hmm. she's out of pain. And the daughter just went on. So they come today... And there's grandma who's like 66. There's mom who's in her late 30s, maybe give or take a little bit. And then there's the 10-year-old granddaughter whose name's Alicia. Now, their background is Baptist. That's neither here nor there. But what we've been teaching and preaching tonight is probably a little bit beyond the average revelation to the average Baptist or even the average evangelical or the average denomination has. Because I grew up Lutheran, so I know I kind of have a clue. And uh, but they were just very open and receptive, especially after the way God moved last time. So she she's sharing and so on, and she 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 limps in, 
and she's telling me about how everything went. I got this great email. She limps in. Here, she had an accident, and she hurt her right foot, actually her fifth metatarsal on the on the outside here, and she she hurt it pretty severely. And so she was barely walking in, and unbeknownst to her daughter, she had a cane in the car. And I have great homeopathy for that. There's there's arnica for trauma and so on and so forth. But she needed Jesus. So the very first thing, it was pretty badly swollen. The ankle was badly swollen. I just knelt down and prayed for it. I could see. Now, we don't live by faith. <laughs> I mean, we live by faith, excuse me, not by sight. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. But I actually saw a change within a few moments there. I could see space where there wasn't any in the shoe and so on. And I just knew God was moving. And she had less pain. Significant left. Anyway. We got going. We got it down to a significant reduction in pain, probably 10 to 15 percent. And God's putting on my heart the granddaughter is supposed to pray, the 10 year old. Mm -hmm. So we got down there on our knees and we're praying for Grandma here. And it was just basically so much better. It was it was just kind of a blow away. And then she's she's like, boy, where were you? 10 years ago when and she talks about how she severed tendons in her finger and it's been like this ever since and she crochets and she's had to work around it and so on and so forth and I go that's great I said oh, Wayne Smith now. and I get yeah, we're here now Jesus do you, think, do you think God's limited because this thing got messed ten up years. 10 years ago yeah. I mean we're talking God you know he's raised people from the dead that have been called stiff and embalmed for several days he's really not put off by the fact that some doctor told you he couldn't fix it 10 years ago to realize he's not belittling the lady it's no. it exposes how easy it is to think limited right. Right. that's so, natural reason so it was just such an awesome setup because <laughs> here's her finger she's going like this I bring her hand out and I bring Alicia her 10 year old daughter over puts her hand around the finger and we just pray and she's doing this and the mother is bawling I mean she's just she's lost it she has just lost it the granddaughter's like thinking I just used me that's right yeah that's right honey and the grandma is just so blessed and I'll tell you that just made my day <laughs> amen So we got to go for it and pray and believe. A ten-year-old become like children and see the yeah. kingdom, right? Yeah. Why? It's an innocence thing. The children thing. I'm I'm convinced. The more I look at that, it's an innocence thing. Being restored back to innocence. Children don't think the stuff we tend to think. Their mindsets haven't been subject to the extreme of what ours have. Sometimes this thing just needs to die. <laughs> Serious. Become like children. What, Daddy? Pray. Believe. Heal the sick. Okay. It's our birthright. It's our inheritance. Amen? We're going to become like children. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? I know I just took off and... And uh, it was just good. I mean, in my heart it felt right. So, Anybody? Thoughts, comments, questions? Because I preach a lot of stuff. Sometimes it stirs stuff in people you've been taught all your life. You have a sincere question like you did in the back. She asked about Paul's thorn in the beginning. And we just uh, talked about that back there. In fact, there's an email, John, here about that Paul Storm thing. I don't know what oh, it yeah. was. But uh, what, what I happened to forward to that lady was to give you a call. She had so many questions, but I suggested that she buy the book. Oh, that's right. Evan that's this lady. Bosworth, Christ the Healer. Anyone Did you ever hear that book? Christ Evan the Healer book? Bosworth, Christ the Healer. Incredible book. It is the definitive answer to that question. Um, it's just it's an amazing book. Well, what, what excites you to see, because we have the same daddy, we have the same spirit, so the pure in heart will see God. So a key in John 7, 17 says, if, if I will to do his will, this is key, if I will to do his will, I'll know the truth concerning doctrine, whether it's God or man, man's authority or God's authority. So what it's telling me is if my purpose for seeking him, reading the word, praying, is for him, truth will be given to me, and he'll allow me to steward it. If you read your Bible to be right, if you just read your Bible in need, if you read your Bible to prove something wrong, you might be amazed how muddy your interpretation can be. 
if you read for Him to will to do His will. I was preaching on Paul's thorn for years because I was in my bedroom and I was reading it and I was preaching on it for years. It's come out very clear. And then somebody gave me the the F.F. Bosworth book just because they knew where my heart was in healing and stuff. And I was sitting reading it. And I saw there was a chapter on Paul's thorn. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Pervatum was written in there what I had been preaching for years. Mm-hmm. Like the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it just overjoyed my heart. Mm-hmm. Because it's when you read it, it's so like almost court of law, nailed down, oh my gosh, scripture. <laughs> Boom. Do you know what I mean? Because because here's a dangerous thing. If you interpret one scripture at the cost of others, you probably need to reevaluate your interpretation. If you're interpreting a scripture to say something at the cost of other scripture to where now you have to abort other scripture. You get what I'm saying? So because of that, when I hear Paul's thorn with sickness... In my mind, from studying and knowing the Word and spending time with Jesus, there's no possible way it could possibly be. The church doesn't even want to talk about it. They're like, leave it alone because there's no way to know. And I'm thinking, yeah, the Word tells you yeah. that it couldn't have been sickness. Yeah. The Word actually tells you what it was. It was persecution. It was the blows to his flesh. That's what the word buffet means, blows to flesh. It was the blows to his flesh for preaching the gospel. It was everything Jesus told him he'd suffer for his name. Yeah. It's very simple. God can't give you a promise, turn around and sovereignly change it, or you'd never be able to trust His Word again. Mm-hmm. There's not a parent here that would give their child a promise and then their child fulfill whatever they were asked to do and then change the promise for a higher wisdom. You'd hurt your child. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. And after a while, they couldn't take you at your word and ever believe what you say. Mm-hmm. Think about what I'm saying. There's no way Paul would have said, yeah, but God, you gave me promises for healing. I know, Paul, but I'm God. You're not. My wisdom's higher than yours, and my ways are not your ways. Yeah, but God, you gave me your word, and your word is your integrity. You could swear by no greater, and you swore by your name, and you raised your word above your name. Yeah, I know, Paul. I know I said all that, but... (laughs) doesn't fly. God would never do that. I've changed my mind, Paul. You have to stay sick. This is my choice. It'll work out for the better. Plus, God said, it's a lie. God told Paul, My grace is sufficient for you. But if you look at Jesus and all the people, every single miracle that he ever did, he never ever once told anybody, my, God's grace is su- sufficient yeah, for you to bear this sickness. So, grace is for persecution, but healing is for sickness and disease. Jesus you get never. It? Yeah. We beheld him in grace and truth. So, grace takes you through persecution. Mm-hmm. The power of God brings healing in sickness. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. Why did his body get so pummeled on the cross? Why did he have to be beaten so bad? Because the blood removed our sin and the body paid the price of the effects of sin in our flesh. Sin has taken a toll on our flesh, true? A fall of yeah. man? Yeah. So Jesus' flesh had to get hammered right. and yeah. beaten brutally. And who actually in the Bible, who actually smote Jesus on the cross? Yeah. Who actually bruised him? The Father bruised his own son on the cross. He took out his wrath, the judgment of sin on his own son so we could become sons so he could have many sons. If you really get technical and look at the scriptures, if you look at the whipping post on the Passion, it's like no man could ever live through that. Did you ever see the Passion? It was, it was amazing. And you're thinking there's no way you could humanly live through that. But if you look at scripture, you have to ask this question, was it possible for Jesus to die? Because the penalty of sin is death, and he had never sinned, so he could not die. That's how he endured the suffering, because of the righteous law of God. In other words, he never sinned. He was perfect and pure, so death couldn't claim him. It wasn't until he was made to be sin that he gave up his spirit and was marked with death and became death. Because people say that most men didn't even survive the beating. Right. And he, and it says how he died so quick. As soon as he was made to be sin, death came. But before he was made to be sin, they beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him and he couldn't die because death couldn't claim him because he had never sinned. Isn't that amazing? So until he was made to be sin, they could have beat him till this day. And they couldn't have killed him. Think about that. That's pretty deep. Why do you think we have everlasting... Adam, the day you eat the trees, the day you surely... Was he sin-free when he made that decree? 
Was Adam sin free? Yeah. Yeah. Was he created to die or live? Yeah. So he could not die because he knew not sin. Right. That's powerful. It's good stuff to think That's about. Another time. <laughs> That's powerful. Bill Johnson said that um, there's 39 categories that all sickness and disease can be categorized. Right, and he took that many lashes. It's incredible. That's not an accident, folks. We want to pray for the sick tonight and uh, believe God. These folks came. We want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, there's a night here before this water baptism. When are we doing a water baptism? I really want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, that's my heart. But we don't have to tonight for these guys. He's just here. Okay. But it would be important because the, the, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so for us mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And we get baptized in Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit. Everywhere in the Bible they were saved. They got baptized in water and the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're baptized to be a witness. Amen? Yes. We're empowered to be a witness. Wow. To be a witness. Isn't that good? He's the person of God. He comes upon you. Yeah. So... Uh, like Bill said this, Johnson said, he's in me for my sake, he's on me for yours. Mm. I like that. Mm. <laughs> oh, I like that. I felt that. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, who came for prayer? Who has sickness in their body? We can pray for you tonight. And just believe God that you be healed. This guy, fellow, what was your name again? I apologize. Bruce. Back in the oh, corner, right, Bruce. Right. Uh has uh, some kind of tumor activity blocking, obstructing, or pressing around the heart area, right? Mm-hmm. No matter what the details of that, and I'm not making light of that, that's very real. His body's felt the effects of that. It, bottom line is it's a growth that wasn't there and has created value. I'm sure Adam didn't have it when he came up out of the dirt by the breath of God. Mm-hmm. So if we're redeemed, we're brought back to original value, whatever's in his flesh that was not there before sin, if sin is removed, then the sting of sin and the effects of sin must be removed. That's called redemption. Mm -hmm. So we pray, be healed, be restored in Jesus' name. name. Tumor, you go. You have no right Mm -hmm. on this man, Bruce. Do you hear what we're saying? Mm -hmm. It's a declaration. It's a prayer. Mm -hmm. It's subduing the earth. It's saying to the mountain. We're not asking God. We're telling that Mm -hmm. thing to go. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Make sense? So some of you that know that well, we've been teaching that. I want you to pray for Bruce. Anybody else that needs prayer? Robin. Yeah. Somebody can agree. If somebody could agree with Chuck or Robin Kyle. And uh, it's a cancer situation. She's in the hospital. Uh, just to believe God for her right now, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know all the details other than uh, it's cancer. It's not God. It's, you know... Cancers, but the doctors say they can't do anything about Jesus as Lord. Okay? Mm-hmm. Cancer's gained such a notoriety because we've seen the damage that it done, has done and we've seen its power. We've lost loved ones. I assure you, Jesus is Lord. He is greater than cancer. Amen. I just saw a dear friend of mine today that was didn't look like my dear friend because of the foul thing called cancer. Mm. And... Uh, it needs to bow to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we need to attack that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I want I want somebody that understands uh, uh, intercession and agreement for somebody else with Chuck that can go to the throne room of God and agree through the mediation of Jesus Christ and pray for Robin even though she's not here. Who believes that's viable and scriptural mm-hmm. that we can agree? So I want somebody to agree with Chuck for Robin to an agreement touching anything on earth. It shall be done, right? Matthew 18. And uh, would you guys, Richard? Well, I know she's got the little guy, but she could come up and hang out with him. Would you meet these two over here? Just talk to them a little about the Holy Spirit. Just share whatever's on your heart. Ask them a couple things to pray. Uh, You like that one? Will you do that? I know you will. (laughs) Amen. Good. It's just on my heart to ask you if you do that. And I can come over and check out with you guys and hang out a little bit. I just wanted to ask you to do that because I'm going to make my rounds for a couple things. But I want to just see if you do that. And Natalie, you can join me, honey, on that, would you? Yeah, you look happy about that. Anybody else for prayer? Sickness. Brandy, do you want prayer? What's going on with your ankle or something? Knee? Knee? 
Who believes Jesus restores needs? Yes. We've seen a few restored. So we want to pray for Brandy's need. Anybody else right now?